So I'm going to do an overview of the ZSJ1. Uh, I went with J because it doesn't really resemble anything in particular, and J is uh, pretty random. I don't think it overlaps with anything. So it's an asymmetric mouse. It's got like a bias design towards claw, maybe some palm, kind of depending on your hand size. Uh, I wouldn't recommend finger tipping it. I mean, obviously you can do whatever you want, but uh, I'm going to go ahead. It's not right click. It's down here. We're going to pull up the multiple views. I'm going to give you some different views on it so you can get a better idea of it. And then I've got some, uh, some bodies here. So I'm going to show some scans of some other mice overlaid with it. Uh, they should be pretty close, even if they're not like, you know, literally 100%. They should give you a good idea of some of the design elements. Like right here, we have the XM1, so you can see bigger hump, obviously asymmetric, lower front buttons, lower front left button, even more, or right button, I mean. You can add ZA13, obviously some similar design aspects to the XM1 in, in so far as having a bigger back, being symmetric, uh, still quite different. Uh, the tie-ons, like a... Uh, KPU precursor, or, you know, KP, because since there's stuff before the KPU, but just to give you an idea of a weirder ASIM, some overlays here. Tyon's got a bigger uh, front and, you know, different bit to its asymmetry, a little more rounded. Mine's a little more square ish in the back, less aesthetically pleasing, I think people would say. Here's the outset, uh, and I've got the scroll wheel kind of like huffed off here, which is why I can't see it, whereas if you look to like the XM1, you can obviously see it. Uh, obviously, the outside's a little, not even a little, I'd, I'd say it's quite a bit bigger in the front, and then uh, mine's bigger in the back. Ultralight 2, obviously incredibly tiny mouse. You can see, you know, it's basically completely engulfed, besides the right mouse button. And then FK2, pretty similar. Obviously, those two being fingertip, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense. If you like these mice, I don't necessarily know that this mouse is for you. So, we'll go back to one view. Got some measurements here. It's not every measurement. I'll post, or just look in the description or something. I'll have a link to a, like a picture or an album or something that has more. So about where I expect kind of most people to grab it, it's going to be about 55.8 millimeters. And that'll be right here in the divots and to about here. As you can see, that's uh, basically the innermost point on the curves. And then it's not the literal widest point of the mouse, but then basically at the back, we've got it to, you know, you had about six millimeters, 61.19 millimeters. And that measurement, uh, while the points are kind of looking in the middle here, that's because the sketch plane, it's actually basically back here to back here, kind of not quite that point, more like this face or verduct, vertex. And then over here, we're looking at, basically, you're looking at 118.2 millimeters in length. Uh, it'll vary a little because, you know, technically, like, you're not, you're probably not actually using this part much. So, you know, if we were to move it back, I don't know. Come on. If we were to move it back here, you might say, oh, it's moving the whole thing. Whatever, it's fine. You know, you cut off some amount of millimeters for, like, the functional bit because, you know, a lot of people aren't actually going to contact back here or, like, up here. But obviously, you know reasonably long. As far as the height, the hump has an apex of 40.8 millimeters. And then, you know, you can see in the front where you actually grab it, uh, so there's a difference in the right mouse button, left mouse button height. So I have those here. That would be about halfway down 26.758 millimeters high for the left mouse button, 22.24 for the right. Uh, but like I said, um, or actually I don't know if I said it yet, but there will be a test shape. So here I go like this. And I'll go ahead and put this on Thingiverse. Uh, I'll probably include a scroll wheel right about here to where the scroll wheel should fit. Uh, that way you can just, you know, actually try it before you buy it. Because, I mean, the, the 3MFs will be on Etsy, of course. Uh, and I'll be using 3MFs instead of SDLs because they're basically the same but better to me. I can include the supports and the print orientations and stuff, so it makes it a little easier for everyone. And as far as I can tell, there's no real downside. It's just another file type that is still, you know, noticed by all the slicers and everything. So you shouldn't have any issues. But yeah, uh, if you want a printed one of these, I can print one and send it to you. It'd probably cost me like five bucks because I assume it'll be like four bucks in shipping or something like that. Uh, this will be for U.S. only. Uh, if you're not in the U.S., just you know try to find someone on like like r slash 3D print my thing. R slash what is it? 3D print my thing. Pretty sure that's the subreddit. You could try that, or just you know a printing service or a friend with a 3D printer or something. Even if they don't have like an amazing 3D printer, uh, like you know. 
that you don't need a perfect one for a test shape. I'll show where the magnets go, I guess. Then I'll pop in the slicer and show you guys how I uh, how I put it together or how I print it out. So you need 10 of the magnets. They're like five by two millimeters. Uh, I'll have them linked, but go one here, 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 here. I got one, two, three, four, five. And then obviously double that for their corresponding magnets up top. So the only one that's kind of annoying to put in, because they mostly have ramps, besides obviously this one doesn't have a ramp, but it's got clearance, so you should be able to get in. This one's a little bit annoying, because essentially you don't literally drop it from the top, but you're essentially dropping it onto this face from the top and then sliding it backwards, like this way. Here, can't select, annoying. Towards this face, essentially. Uh, it's a tight fit, but it, it works. Just, you know, I would take something to poke it with basically from this angle, or this angle right here. And then... I'll show you how I print these, but then this thing will have its own uh, its own magnet right there. And you're just going to screw in the side buttons. Uh, these use the two long screws. Everywhere else just uses the PCB screws. Uh, once you put the PCB on, you'll be using PCB screws right in these three spots to put the mouse buttons on themselves. And then otherwise you just have the standard mounts for the G305. Top magnet here, but just to see where it goes, you're just going to load them from the inside. Top magnets go there. What I like to do with all the magnets is I like to, I'll, I'll put a picture on the video here, but I like to set the bottom magnet, get it in place, and then put just like a little dab of glue or something, which is why I have an opening on this side, also so you can push it. But uh, I put a dab of glue right there, like on each one, get them settled, let it dry, and then take another magnet, uh, put the cor corresponding one up top, like not, so like. Obviously, we'd be doing it for this piece here, but don't put it in. Don't put it in the printed piece yet. Put it on the bottom piece, resting on top of this, so you can make sure the orientation's correct. That way, you don't have backwards magnets. Because again, I would still glue it in up top. Uh, I don't think they'll slide out, but you know, there's just no reason not to add a dab of glue. And that way, you make sure you put them the right way. Uh, so same deal as usual. I've been doing putting screws right here, and then you just mostly screw in all the way, and then you back it out like. I don't know, call it two rotations or something, and then kind of test how it fits for years. Uh, that way you can adjust the pre-travel, post-travel, and the click feel a bit. Uh, same deal goes for how the side buttons are. Same deal, you know, got slots here for them. Um, also, I think that if you were to take the long screws here and tighten them as much as possible, I think the side buttons don't feel that great. So what I do is I tighten them, uh, you know, basically a reasonable amount. I don't strip them ever, obviously. And then I back them out like, I don't know, half a turn, maybe less or something. Uh, it's a little annoying because basically what you're going to end up doing is putting the PCB, this holds the side button PCB. You'll put the PCB like uh, on and then have to probably back out these screws or the ones down here. here can't select the face because the angle. Uh, the ones down here a little bit. I mean, but it's only going to take you a couple minutes and then you'll be good to go. Just that way you can get the clicks feeling all you know correct and everything. So I'll go ahead and open this in Super Slicer. Uh, again, I can run through the settings real quick, but I'll, you can just pause and check these out if you want. These are pretty much the basic 0.2 millimeter settings. I don't really deviate from these all too much. I'll show you where I do. And like, you know, my speed, speed and everything, the width and flow, I mean, that's gonna change a bit based on your printer anyways. That's why I don't think these are particularly helpful, but just in case you want some sort of a base. So these will be all the three MFs in here. Uh, I have to put the battery holders in this file still, so I don't have those. I should probably get those. The side buttons are quite simple. You you can just do uh, support on build plate for these. Uh, here, I usually print them individually like this uh, when I do print individually. But it's roughly going to look like that. Quite straightforward. They have flat spots. You don't have to worry about doing anything manually. I'm going to set this back to enforcers only because I do manual supports for basically everything else. The bottom, I do not use any supports for. I don't think you need them uh, here. You will want to turn on external perimeter first, however. Otherwise, here, rotate this 90 degrees. You're going to have uh, like walls showing like right here and here, essentially, if you don't. So that's why I do that. Uh, this is the only piece you'll print like this. So you can turn ex external perimeters off. If you really want to, you can try putting supports on this side button overhang, this part here. The problem with that 
I'll show you once they load. So the outside ones aren't that bad. And right here, these are fine to remove too. They're a little annoying, but they're not that bad. The problem is I always get supports on the inside here, and I couldn't really um, like cleanly 100% get them out every time or get them to not appear inside. So what I do is I just don't put supports here at all, so none. And then I just take a little deburring tool and I run it along this blue area here and make it, you know, pretty good. Uh, deburring tools are pretty useful for cleaning all the prints anyway, so if you don't have one, I would probably get one. They're cheap. But yeah, you don't really have to do much. This thing takes about 3 hours, 20 minutes-ish for me. It'll probably go faster on yours if you have, like, better print settings. I've got some grips here. Not, not much to say about these. I uh, just use them to cut your own grips, you know, left and right, right there. What else? So this thing right here, uh, again, since these are all 3MFs, if you just open them up in a Prusa Slicer, Super Slicer, and you go to For Support Enforcers Only, you just click Slice. You can see I've already pre-sliced how I do the supports on them. It's better than just the build plate here, because see how this, this little area is not filled? If you do support on build plate, it's going to want to support that area, and it's not unreasonable necessarily, but that area is going to bridge fine. You don't need support material there. And then you're going to have a hard time completely removing all this, just, even though it's a small amount, this support material on the inside. It's, it's just really annoying to remove since it's such a small surface. So I just don't do that. And yep, that's, this is the orientation I print that in. And since these are 3MFs, they all, you know, they're in the correct orientation already. You shouldn't need to change anything. I do have these two top ones not labeled uh, with manual supports or whatever. So they're in, uh, I'll probably put, uh, you know, like hyphen... Uh, wrong orientation or whatever, but I'll just put them in here just in case you want them flat. Yeah. Wrong orientation. Okay, because I would use these ones with manual supports painted on. So this is a version with holes. Uh, it takes about three grams off ish. It'll. I mean, if you really, really like holes or you really, really want all that weight savings, you know, go ahead and do that. And I'll go ahead and show you. This is how I paint on the supports for it. Very minimal. Uh, the thing is, you will need good adhesion. So if you know you have kind of you know scuff bed adhesion, you know go through YouTube, go through guides or something, and make sure you're doing all the normal stuff. You know, level your bed, make it clean, use glue stick if you have to. I recommend glue stick for this, uh, and I have good bed adhesion just because uh, I don't think it'll happen too much at this angle. But some of the angles I was trying to print this at essentially had too much force on like this side or something, so then they would be tempted to slightly. Uh, I say like move slightly move or whatever during the print and then obviously you layer shift and it's an issue so i'll show you how the supports look with this this is why i say you want a glue stick so this is without a brim but even with a brim here we'll reslice it with it even with a brim even if you add more brim you really don't have that much contact down at the bottom so that's why i use a glue stick to make sure everything stays especially because this particular post right here very thin so if you have any sort of wobbling issues because your bed's going too fast or your adhesion's not great then it'll just mess with something up top, so might as well not waste your time. Just put some glue down. Uh, as far as that, though, uh, th this is really all you need to support. You don't really have to support these. You can just deburring tool right here if you want, but I just support them just because. Uh, and then I'll just show you the top version without holes. Uh, same thing. Literally the same thing. Uh, I didn't put holes in the bottom because, A, you know, like I said, they don't make a big difference. Uh, I've taken out a lot of material on the inside as is. And that's how it, you know, the weight is achieved. It's not an ultra weight or ultra lightweight mouse by any any stretch of the imagination. It's like I think 75 grams ish or something. And then you take off three grams for the top with holes, so 72. And then if you use um, a 675 battery, which I have a battery holder in, I'll put in here for it. That's another I think three grams, maybe four grams off. So you know, at best you're looking at like 68, 69 grams. Um, you know, at worst you're looking at 75. Uh, it's not gonna, you know. It's not going to break your wrist or something, being 75 grams. I would obviously prefer it be lighter, but this is where it is. Here, I'll run over the battery holders. I'll make sure these are correct, because these might need to be slightly altered. But, I mean, the general gist will be the same. Uh, so I, I still have to save the painted on supports, but I do them like this. You'll note that I leave a circle here, because again, similar to the side button holder. If you go to support on build plate, here, and take off a brim. It'll end up doing the circle fill again, and we just you just don't need support material there, and it's too annoying to remove. So again, go like this. We're going to manually paint on some supports. Pretty much support all the bottom. Do note that's two different phases right here. 
again, I'll include this painted with supports just, just so you can see. This is, I mean, this is literally just how I do it. It's very simple. So this should be about good to where I don't get any support material in the circles. All good. And then the other battery holder is still the exact same. Here, let me go ahead and save this one. Same deal for this. 